game. Blouses. Gallon Chuck. Disaster. I forget it. Disaster. Well, I mean, I'm no doctor. We now join America's most popular show already in progress. Everybody loves Mitch and Sean. You guys are the greatest duo. <laughs> Fantastic. That team sure did suck last night. They just played sucked. I've seen teams suck before, but they were the suckiest bunch of sucks that ever sucked. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Post Game Pints podcast. My name's Mitch Gallo. That's Sean Campbell. We're brought to you by LaBros. Coming up, we have a lot of interesting things to get to. We're going to have a lot of fun, random sports thoughts, and pop quiz. But before we get to that, Campbell, what are you drinking? Uh, today is the uh, LaBros Nor'easter, uh, the wicked Nor'easter. Uh, this this is nice. This is nice. A nice solid IPA. Uh, you know me. I love my IPAs. I'm sitting back. I'm relaxing. This is perfect. We got plenty to get to, plenty of sports talk coming. Uh, we're going to go back in the past, do a little reverse retro. But uh, yeah, the Wicked Nor'easter. Absolutely love this. Uh, this is uh, easily one of my quick favorites at LaBrosse Brewery. Check them out, labrosse.com. And I know, Sean, uh, I'm having maybe your favorite of all. I know you like the Northeaster there, but I am drinking. Ah. Okay. Can you see which one that is? Oh, you got the mango creamsicle. Mango creamsicle to start my night off. Because I think it's going to be a good night. I hope it's going to be a good season as we start with our rapid fire here on the Post Game Pines podcast. Uh, how good are you feeling for a January 1st start for the National Hockey League? Sean, I felt good from the beginning. You're the only one that's, like, butting heads with me here. Actually, not just you. A lot of people are. Uh, confidence seems to be low right now when it comes to a return to play for January 1st. But I just look at everything combined, and I think it makes a whole lot of sense. And here's the one thing that we haven't spoken about very much that I'm going to add as far as a January 1st date is concerned. The NHL keeps saying they want the Stanley Cup to be awarded no later than July 15th. That, of course, because of the Olympics in Beijing. I think that you need to get the season started in early January because we're looking at what has happened in the other sports leagues that haven't had, have a, had a bubble like the NFL and like Major League Baseball. They've had to cancel games. They've had to change their schedule on the fly. And I, want to make, I think the NHL wants to make sure uh, as much as possible – that at the end of their schedule, they have a few weeks to play with where they can make up for some of those canceled games. So I don't think necessarily the Jan 1st is about wanting to start as early as possible. I think the Jan 1st is about making sure you have time at the end of the schedule to get in as many games as possible. Yeah, look, I know you're saying that I'm butting heads. And, and you know me, I'm the internal optimist. I like looking at the positive side of things all the time. But it's the roller coaster ride of emotions that I have because one day I'm feeling good about a January 1st start and then another day I'm not. And it seems to be going back and forth, back and forth. And you're catching me today on a down. Tomorrow I might be on a high thinking, oh yeah, January 1st, they're going to be on the same page. But I know, and you know, Mitch, too, that it's going to be a big battle when it comes to money. When it comes to money, how much more will the players take a hit on? They were promised a certain amount when they renegotiate the CBA. They want to renegotiate again. There was talk about handing bonus money back. When was the last time a player ever handed back bonus money? And the fact that the owners are inquiring or knocking on the door about that, no thank you. I, I'm more skeptical because of the money and the fact that there's so much money for the players at hand and that they've given up already. I don't know how much more they want to give. And I know the owners are taking a huge hit too. Everybody's taking a hit. I get yep. it. 
But I think the players feel they've given enough to this point. The owners, you're the owners. Take the big chunk of the hit. Let's go. Let's play. I hear what you, I, I hear what you're saying, and I'd be foolish to say that it's not going to be an issue. But I really hope, as a hockey fan, and listen, you have a vested interest in this. I have a vested interest in this. The players and the owners do. Everybody in the media does. We all want hockey yes. to come back. I'm I'm really hoping, Sean, that uh, let's go NHL. Let's go. I, I hope that they're smart about this. And look, I, I think that Donald Fear, the head of the NHLPA, is pretty bright when it comes to this type of thing. The NHL and the NHLPA more than ever before have to work as partners. They, they, they've worked as partners, but now we're at like next level working as yeah. partners. And I think that the NHL players are going to have to concede more money and they're going to have to do it. And they're, 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 they probably don't want to, but they're going to want to concede money more than they're going to want to concede an entire season's worth of pay. Yeah. It's, there's going to be conceding on both sides. I'm, I'm with you. So okay. January, January 1st start, just give me yeah. an optimism out of 10. For me? Yeah. Nine. I'm at two. <laughs> All right, let's 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 change to something a little bit more fun, Mitch. Okay, well, hey, Sean. Yeah. The NHL, what do they need right now? Money. They need money, which is why this week, it brings us to topic number two, the NHL has released their reverse retro jerseys. And I know there's been mixed opinion across the board on many of these jerseys. Look. We do a short podcast. We don't have time to run through 31 NHL teams and their third jersey that they're going to try to sell at Christmas time for the kids out there. But you're a big jersey guy, by the way. I, uh, I love the one you're currently wearing. And uh, thanks to Dennis in, uh, in Villamart, a big-time listener of the Hot Topic uh, back on TSN 690. Thank you for sending Campbell that one. Maybe on the next episode, I'll bust out my Peter Forsberg a jersey that Dennis sent me. Sean, I just want to know, what's the best jersey that you saw, and what's the worst jersey that you saw? All right, I, I, I know you said you don't want to do every single one. I kind of made a list of my favorite three and my least favorite three. Is that okay, that I went with three and three? I'm giving you six out of the 31. There's some that I like that I'm not going to mention. There's some that I hate that I'm not going to mention, but I just thought, and I'm not going to break them down too much. You know I like my jerseys. You know I like to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I like bad jerseys. I like ugly jerseys. You've seen my closet. I have tons of jerseys. So I'm all in. I like the concept of reverse retro, but I'm going to go with the ones that I like to start off. One, Chicago. Black and red, same, some of my favorite color combinations out there. They're kind of sticking with the logo. Chicago, it wins. Even though it's not too off the board for Chicago, I'm still in love. Any logo with Chicago on it, you know, is one of my favorite jerseys. You asked me. The red Chicago jersey is my favorite all time, so I'm still sticking with Chicago in the reverse retro. That is uh, right there. The next one, the LA Kings. I love flashing back to the purple and yellow, and the they go back to the purple and yellow, but they go back to the silver and gold logo. So it's kind of a mix between the two, and it just put a smile on my face when I saw it. So the LA Kings, purple and yellow, with the silver and gold generation of Wayne Gretzky and that logo. I was never a Kings fan, but I like that logo. And, uh, of course, one of my other favorites. Yeah, I, I think this is up there with everybody. Yeah, that's right. I wore this hat for a reason. The uh, Colorado Avalanche. Love that they use the Nordiques logo with the Avalanche burgundy colors. And it's just straight up two colors, the burgundy colors and the Nordiques logo, the Fleur de Lis. Beautiful. That is my favorite, the Colorado one. The more I think about it, I have to put it at the top. I might even go out and buy that jersey for me, not my kids. Yeah, listen, man, it's beautiful. And if you're going to give three of each, I guess I'll give three of each. Got to okay. put the Colorado Avalanche in there. That's an actual reverse retro. That's what that, I mean, the other jerseys, there's not as much of a, a retro ver, uh, aspect to it. Some of them, yeah, they go back in time a little bit, but this is actually retro. So I love it. Let me go with the other one that's actually retro. Kind of wish they would have went green but I think they've already busted out the green in the past. So that's why they went gray. Carolina, we get to see the Hartford Whales. I want to see the whale. I love that jersey. So uh, I'm going to go uh, Carolina. And then, Sean, something about that Statue of Liberty, New York Rangers jersey. <laughs> I don't like that one. I don't like that one at all. Oh. I like that one, man. Hey, you know, I have a bias towards New York-based teams. And uh, I love 
uh, that New York Rangers colors. And uh, it's another original six team. It's the only original six team that really went off the board with theirs. You know, I think Chicago and Montreal and Toronto, Detroit, they're all kind of conservative, didn't do anything with the logo. I love uh, the New York Rangers. As far as uh, the worst jerseys I, sh I saw, Sean. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Arizona dog poop. It was, it, was the, it was the worst. It was so ugly. The colors are ugly. Oh. The logo's ugly. There's nothing inspiring about that jersey. Arizona Coyotes get nothing right. Nothing Come on, hold right. On. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The one thing Arizona does right is after they score a goal. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Other than their goal horn, they get nothing right. So I'm going to say Arizona, part of the uh, bad uh, jersey combinations here. I am going to go with Boston. I just didn't like the color. I think it's going to look like not, not great when they wear it out on the ice. So I'm going to uh, say that one. And then I'll go original six again. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings looks like a practice jersey. Not a fan. Oh, I didn't mind the Red Wings one. The Bruins one, I'm with you a little bit. But the Red Wings one, there was something about the all-white. It was sharp. I, 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 I can appreciate that. Because I'm going to give you my three that I did not like. Uh, one is the Anaheim Ducks. I know it's old school, just too cartoonish for me. I know I like my cartoons. I still watch cartoons. Look in the back, I got a cartoon poster. I get it. But not it for me or for the, for the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, the other one was the Vancouver Canucks. Sorry. It's just the mash, the mixing of the two colors. Never liked it when the Blues did it. Never liked when the Canucks did that. By the way, I came prepared. I thought the Canucks, if they wanted to do something really cool, they could have done something like this. Huh? Huh? You like this, Mitch? Not bad. All black with a little green trim. Shout out. That's right. To Roberto Luongo in that jersey. Beauty. This is one of my favorite jerseys I have in my closet. They've never worn this, but hey. That's a good concept that I think that they could have done. And uh, I apologize for anybody who's listening on SoundCloud. You're going to have to check us out on YouTube to see the jersey that I was just talking about. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry. I cannot get behind Montreal Canadiens third jerseys. I don't like gimmick third jerseys for the Canadiens. I know the logo hasn't changed and it's just the colors. I am just against it. Call me old if you want to. I'm not it. I, I like throwback jerseys with the Canadiens. I don't like third jerseys with the Canadiens. So it didn't work for me with the blue. No, sorry. Yeah, I thought it was nice. So you let us know. You can comment below if you what jerseys you liked and which ones you didn't like. I know that Mitch likes the jersey that I am wearing right now. Hey, look, Beauty. number 12 on the All-Star jersey from 1993. Does anybody know what name is on the back? Number 12 from the All-Star game in 1993. It was right here in Montreal. Does anybody know the name on the back? Oh, you can uh, tweet at Mitch Y. Gallo or tweet at Sean R. Campbell. Hey, maybe I'll let you know a little later on in the show. All right, one more, Mitch. I thought we could have some fun with this one. I know, it's the post-game Pines podcast. We could go and do whatever we want, right? Anytime. Survivor Series is this weekend. What are you looking forward to most, Survivor Series? We don't, we don't get to talk too much wrestling. We both like it. There's things that we like about it. There's things we hate about it. What are you looking forward to most for Survivor Series WWE this weekend? I feel like you're going to have to uh, run through some of the matches for me, and I can give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down because I find it hard to follow both brands right now, and I know most of it is Raw versus SmackDown. The only match I'm aware of, is the Drew McIntyre uh, Roman Reigns match? And, and I again, know it's not, you're not you're not up for that one. Well, why why would Randy Orton win the WWE Championship from Drew McIntyre and then drop the title on Raw three weeks later? Like the writing makes no sense. I don't well, see the purpose of that. Well, one, you get another title reign on Randy, who's going for the title reign of all time, that if he gets it another, it will be 15 times. He's at 14, coming up to that record 16, because he's been around forever. Uh, plus, Randy sometimes needs time off. So it's Drew McIntyre is a guy that can be there uh, week in and week out. Yeah, so keep the title on McIntyre. There was that, no that, purpose, there was no reason for the change of titles. Yeah, so you kind of go out there. And it's funny. I know that that's not the one that you're looking forward to. You know why I'm looking forward to that one more than anyone, any other one? 
it's because you have the two champions, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, in the ring at the same time, and The Miz has the Money in the Bank briefcase. And I don't know. I just feel like with both titles sitting there, he might come out, say he wants to get it. He might go for one. If he pimps any one of them, he gets their title. I just, I, I think that there's a, there's, a, there's a lot to play with on that, uh, that storyline. And the other thing for Survivor Series this weekend, they're celebrating The Undertaker 30 years. I'm in. Say Undertaker's going to be there. I'm in. It's, it's yep. easy for me. Yep, I'm good with that. So the other, the other matches, it's just that title versus title. You have kind of intercontinental versus uh, the U.S. title, Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn. Go Sami Zayn, uh, Montreal Zone. And you have the tag titles. You got uh, the Street Profits versus the New Day. Always enjoy watching the New Day. Uh, that is a, a good one. And then you have Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. Uh, the women and men in in the uh, in the five on five. So I, it should be it should be interesting. The reason why I like Survivor Series it starts building up towards Rumble, where I know that you and I really like it. Yeah, give me a call when it's the Royal Rumble because uh, you didn't overwhelm me with that card you just listed. You don't want to watch it with me. I'll watch fine. I'm not overwhelmed though. I'm not excited about it. We'll uh, we'll have a couple, uh, you know, uh, pints from <laughs> La Boss, and I yeah. think we'll be good. Uh, by the way, check them out at 133 La Brass in Point Claire. Check at labrasse.com for their hours. And uh, one of the things we're going to be doing here on the Post Game Pints podcast is I'm going to ask you a question about episode number three. This is episode four. On episode three. Mitch compared the Canadians to another NHL team. You walk into LeBras Brewery, you're going to get a discount on your beer if you say the answer. So you just have to check out episode three. Give them that answer. Say, hey, Mitch said this team is just like the Montreal Canadiens, and you're going to get a discount on your beer when you walk into LeBras Brewery. And that's what we could do here on the Post Game Pints podcast. Uh, what a partner. We have uh, – Something we're not ready to announce just yet, but there's something pretty special coming down the line uh, for Mitch and I. So check it out, labrosse.com, Labrosse Brewery 133 in Point Claire. Check labrosse.com for their hours. They're open to go pick up beer and take out. I know that their tap room's not open. We can't sit down just yet, but once that's all done, we're going to have some fun there. Got to go back and listen to episode three myself to remember what I said about the Canadians. Oh, I know what you said. You don't remember what team you compare them to? Come on. Um, I'm kidding. I just want to go watch again because it was a great yeah. podcast. Uh, check it out. YouTube, SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, wherever you can get it. Uh, lit, comment. We just opened up a Facebook page for the show. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff. So get involved right here on the Post Game Pines podcast. You ready, Mitch? Snap yourself awake there? Yeah, no, we're ready for the first time we're going to do this on the podcast. Random sports thoughts. Where anything goes. Anything. All right. You want to get us kicked off here? Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. I, I got a lot of jerseys on this one. And this is my uh, first random sports slot. I brought some props. Again, this is for YouTube. I'm going to tell you what it's like on uh, SoundCloud as well. But my first random sports slot, when I was looking at the reverse retro jerseys, the Winnipeg just failed. They failed miserably. I don't like that great color. Yeah, we've seen them do the flashback to the old Winnipeg Jets, but those old Winnipeg Jets, it's what Arizona should have done. Arizona should have done the old Winnipeg Jets. That would have been funny. But let's let's be honest. The Winnipeg Jets should have went old school, baby blue thrashers. Old school, baby blue thrashers have the sleeve it says, and just have to say Winnipeg down the side. I don't know. I, my first round of sports slot when I saw the reverse retro and the Hurricanes went to the Whalers. The Jets should have went baby blue with Winnipeg down the sleeve. That was such an easy sell. Easy sell. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's funny, Sean, because my random sports slot number one has to do with the jerseys, and you could call me weird. So beautiful. You do all the time, but I have to say that I was hoping that the Minnesota, that the Dallas Stars were going to wear a Minnesota North Stars jersey when they played against the Minnesota Wild. I was really hoping <laughs> for that. Yeah, it'd be great if the if the Coyotes wore a Jets against the Jets on the same night. On the same I love night. it. 
I love it. Absolutely. All right, my second round of sports thought. Uh, I'm going to go to World Juniors. Uh, training camp has opened up. Uh, they've got 40 plus players. They're going to whittle it down to 25. And maybe we're not into it yet because it's November, but there's no NHL. And I know that our partners at TSN carry, carry this, and it's going to be nonstop action, red, white games, everything. But because of the hype and nothing's going on, this will be the most watched World Junior of all time. Yeah, I don't know about that. Just because of the 2005 World Juniors when there was no NHL season, that it was the best Team Canada that I think we've ever seen with the likes of uh, Carter and Getzlaff and Perry and Crosby and Bergeron and Weber and Phaneuf and all these guys that got to play on that team. Yeah, I didn't say it was going to be the best, by the way. And I think I it's going to be the most watched, mainly because the other teams are going to be better too. The other teams are going to be stacked. I just feel, yeah, it's possible. I just feel like ratings across the board for television and sports have been down. So I, yeah. I, I wonder if the World Juniors is also going to take a hit. Yeah, but I'm also talking about in Canada. Uh, yeah. Across the states. But I think in Canada, you're going to get one of the most watched World Juniors. They're going to be, it's in the middle of the winter. In the summer, people come outside. They, they don't like things at the wrong time. But World Juniors is still going to be at the regular time that it normally is. Just thought I'd throw that out there. All right, my uh, second random sports thought, Sean. You can be a good team without a good quarterback, but you can't be a good quarterback without a good team. I'm trying to go, like, poetic on you. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to find a bad team with a good quarterback. How's that? See, I got some bad teams with quarterbacks I like that I think they're going to be good, but they're young teams that haven't developed yet, right? So, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out another team that has a great quarterback that's no, like, you kind of think of those long-standing guys like Matt Stafford and Matt Ryan. They've kind of been there, they're staples on their team, but they're not, they're not perfect. I don't know. I like, I like the quote. Yeah. You might want to, you might want to put that up on a wall and put it next to Muhammad nope. Ali. Doesn't it sound great? I'll give I'll give you a bunch of teams where I think the team is good. The quarterbacks average or not great. Mm -hmm. I ahead. think I think the um, I think the Tennessee Titans are a good team. I don't think Ryan Tannehill is a great quarterback. Yeah, I, I like him in in Tennessee. I think it's been a nice little fit for him. I think it's been a nice fit. I have nothing against Ryan Tannehill, but he doesn't overwhelm anybody. You know, uh, I think they're on a bit of a rule. I think uh, the Vikings are a good team. I don't think Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. Yeah. I think they could be much better without Kirk Cousins. He gets paid so much money. That's a good example right there. I'll give you, you one more. Be, you could also be a bad team with a bad quarterback and be the Chicago Bears. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you I'll give you one more on the quarterback front. Okay. I think the uh, I think the Rams are good. I don't think Jared Goff is good. Yeah, I don't mind Jared Goff. Oh, yeah. and how about how about last year? I think the San Francisco 49ers were good last year. I don't think Jimmy G's good. Yeah, Jimmy G. Well, Jimmy G and I have our issues, so. <laughs> yes! Writing that down. Jimmy G issues. And we have to name the podcast. Just, just taking down notes. Just taking down notes. I take them down uh, throughout the show. All right, uh, my final. Uh, it's funny. It's, I, I want football, too. And it's not that this is a great quarterback, but I don't think the team is that good. How's that? I, I don't. I don't think the Ravens are as good as people think they are. I'm. I'm sorry, Dave Trenadui, partner in crime, but the Ravens aren't a great football team. Are you saying that because you watched them in prime time lose to the Patriots? No, I've watched them a couple times. I just um, Lamar Jackson. He, he's the perfect example of, of one year everybody knew what he was doing, now they game plan, and they yeah. can't figure out a second game plan. And I understand that that's why it's it's hard to stop a running quarterback when you kind of see it the first time you're trying to manage it. And it's still not easy to do. But when you have that backup, oh, it's running? I'm just going to throw it all the time and I'll be good. He's He's not as comfortable doing that. I, I, I still, I know he likes having the ball in his hand. He likes making those decisions. Uh, I think he gets hit too much. 
Uh, he's, he's so young. He's still 23 years old. He's already won an MVP. <laughs> I, I think that there's just this year I watched them and I'm unimpressed almost every single time that I've watched them. And I'd say out of nine of their games, I've watched a good portion of four of them. And, and I'm just giving you that's the percentage. A good portion of four of their games, and I just don't like them. I haven't been sold. Maybe they were great in the other five that I didn't watch. But from what I watched, Ravens aren't great. And Sean, just know we're up against the clock, so let's uh, let's pick up the pace here. My final uh, round of sports thought. We too got caught up people, on the jerseys. Too many people like prospects too much. <laughs> Shots fired. I'll let that one sit. We'll leave, uh, we'll leave it there. You want to get to a pop quiz? Yeah, give me one. Give me one. I want, I want right, you to uh, give me one first. You want I'm me ready. to go? All yeah, right. You... My pop quiz for you. Top five in points. For active players, drafted number two overall. We're looking for Ooh. five on the board. Active players drafted two overall. <laughs> active players. Uh, Tyler Sagan. Tyler Sagan, number five. Okay. Uh, number two overall. Then uh, it's got to be Patrick Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe, number one in points. Okay. Then uh, we got to go... Uh, Hedman is not around in, long enough. If if Sege is uh, ahead of him at number five, so I have to go back to the two thousands. Oh, Bobby Ryan? Nope. No, he didn't get enough points, eh? So not Bobby Ryan. Oh, uh, Malkin. Malkin, number two. Okay. So then after Malkin, trying to think. Two thousand. Uh. Why can't I can't the Patrick Kane draft? Taves is three, right? Taves is a number three pick. He's a number three. You need three. clues. Yeah, give me a couple. I've got three out of the four, three out of the five, right? I get you clues that are going to knock this out of the park for you. Okay, go. Give me, give me one clue. One of them you have in, the clo in your closet. Okay, that would be Eric Stahl. Number two, he's the third, uh, number three ranked over here. And the last one is in every one of your pop quiz top tens. Oh, Jason Spezza. Jason Spezza. There's your five. Yeah. There you go. Hey. Two picks. I like that. That was a good list. That was a good list. I, I would have gotten the Eric Stahl if you gave me a little bit more time, but uh, that was good. Good for me. Good for you. Congratulations. All right. We got to name that podcast. And uh, cheers once again. As uh, Mitch, you think of a couple ideas that you want to name that podcast to LaBrosse Brewery. Check them out at 133. And remember, if you go there and you tell them what team Mitch compared the Canadians to in episode three of the Post Game Pints podcast, you get a discount on your beer. And it's it's odd. So it's amazing. Tonight, it is the Wicked Naista. I wish I – that was my best knuckles. Cream Sakul for Mitchie. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I jotted a couple things down here. Yeah. I have um, Jimmy G Issues. Definitely have that. And Arizona is dog poop. Uh, yeah, I had something about Arizona gets nothing. When you went dog poop, do we get to use the poop emoji? Yes. All right. As long as we see the emoji. As long as the emoji is part of it, I'm fine. All right. All right. Arizona poop emoji. Sold. Love it. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Post Game Pints Podcast. Campbell, Gallo, subscribe, like, comment, do what you want. Thanks for everybody for checking it out. YouTube, SoundCloud, you know it. Cheers. <laughs>